Lesson 1, Safety First Hey Anna, I was walking near a school today, and it got me thinking about pedestrian safety. Hello John. That's an important topic. What specifically caught your attention? I noticed how children might be crossing the street, and it made me realize how crucial it is to have safe crosswalks. Absolutely. Crosswalks are vital for ensuring that pedestrians, especially children, can cross safely. Right. Some places have bright signs and signals, while others seem to lack proper visibility. Yes, and it's often the responsibility of drivers to be cautious, especially in school zones. Definitely. I always slow down when I see a school nearby. It's all about being alert and aware. That's a great habit. Have you ever seen a situation where safety measures were lacking? I have. Once, I saw children trying to cross a busy street without any crosswalks nearby. It was concerning. That sounds dangerous. It emphasizes the need for communities to invest in proper infrastructure. Exactly. Clear markings and adequate lighting can make a huge difference in preventing accidents. And education plays a role too. Teaching children about road safety is essential. Yes. Schools can organize programs to help kids understand how to navigate roads safely. That's a fantastic idea. The more informed they are, the safer they will be when crossing streets. For sure. It's also important for parents to model safe behavior when walking with their children. Absolutely. Kids learn by example, so demonstrating safe practices is crucial. Speaking of which, I always remind my younger siblings to look both ways before crossing. That's a good practice. It's a simple reminder that can save lives. It really is. And I think communities should hold events to raise awareness about pedestrian safety. What a great suggestion. Community engagement can foster a culture of safety and responsibility. Exactly. Creating a safer environment benefits everyone, not just pedestrians. And it encourages people to walk more, which is good for health and the environment too. That's true. It's a win-win situation when we prioritize safety in our communities. Lesson 2, on the right track. Hey Anna, I was out the other day and got lost trying to find the nearest train station. Hello John. That must have been frustrating. Did you ask anyone for directions? I did. I approached a passerby and said, excuse me, can you tell me how to get to the nearest train station? That's a good way to ask for help. What did they say? They were really helpful. They pointed me in the right direction and even gave me some landmarks to look for. That's great. It's so helpful when people give specific landmarks. It makes it easier to navigate. 
Exactly. They mentioned a large bookstore as a reference point. I found it quite useful. Bookstores are often good landmarks. They tend to be big and noticeable. Right. I followed their directions and eventually found the train station without any more trouble. How relieved you must have felt. Did you make it to your destination on time? Fortunately, yes. I caught my train just in time. It was quite an adventure. It sounds like it. Did you learn anything from that experience? I definitely did. I realized the importance of asking for help instead of wandering aimlessly. That's a valuable lesson. Sometimes, people are more than willing to assist if you just ask. Exactly. It also reminded me to stay calm and not panic when I'm lost. Staying calm can really help you think better and make clearer decisions. True. Now, I always carry a map or use an app to help me navigate when I'm exploring new places. That's a smart idea. Technology can be a great companion when you're traveling. Yes, but I still think it's important to interact with locals. They can offer tips that apps might not provide. Absolutely. Locals often have the best insights about shortcuts or hidden gems in the area. And it's a good way to practice language skills, too. Engaging with people can enhance your speaking abilities. That's so true. Conversations like these can boost confidence and improve fluency over time. Definitely. I look forward to my next adventure, knowing I can navigate it better now. Lesson 3. Tech Transformations Hey Anna, have you noticed how technology has changed our lives dramatically? Hello John. Absolutely. It's incredible to see how much technology influences our daily routines. For sure. Just think about how we communicate. We can connect with anyone instantly, no matter where they are. Exactly. I remember when long-distance calls were so expensive, and now we have free video calls. Right? And social media allows us to share our lives and experiences in real time. It's amazing. But sometimes, I wonder if it creates a disconnect in face-to-face -face interactions. That's a valid point. People often seem more engaged with their screens than with the people around them. Yes. It's a bit ironic, isn't it? We're more connected digitally but might feel isolated in person. True. Balancing online and offline interactions is essential for our well-being. Absolutely. Do you think technology has made our lives easier overall? I believe so, but it also comes with its own challenges. For instance, the constant flow of information can be overwhelming. That's a great observation. It sometimes feels like we're drowning in data and notifications. 
Yes. Finding time to unplug and recharge is crucial in this digital age. It really is. I try to set aside time each day to disconnect and enjoy some quiet moments. That's a good practice. I enjoy going for walks without my phone, it helps clear my mind. Walking without distraction sounds refreshing. It's a great way to appreciate the world around us. Definitely. Plus, it's a chance to notice things we might overlook when we're glued to our screens. Exactly. Technology has its benefits, but we shouldn't forget to enjoy the simple pleasures in life. Well said. It's all about finding that balance so we can enjoy both worlds. And being mindful of how we use technology can lead to a more fulfilling life. Absolutely. I think it's essential to harness technology for good while also nurturing our personal connections. That's the key. Staying connected with friends and family in meaningful ways is what truly enriches our lives. Indeed. Let's keep reminding ourselves to strike that balance as we navigate the tech-filled world. Lesson 4, The Mystery of VIPs Hey Anna, do you know who the VIP is for the event this weekend? Hello John. I've heard some whispers about it, but I'm not entirely sure. Why do you ask? I'm just curious. I wonder why they're so important that they get special treatment. That's a good point. VIPs often receive extra attention, but it can vary from event to event. Exactly. Sometimes it's about their status or contributions to a particular field. Yes. For instance, a celebrity or influential leader might be considered a VIP due to their impact. Right. But other times, it could be a local hero or someone who has done great work in the community. True. It's interesting how the definition of VIP can change based on the context. I also find it fascinating how some people enjoy the perks that come with being a VIP. Definitely. From reserved seating to exclusive access, it can be quite glamorous. I wonder if they feel any pressure to live up to that status. That's a thoughtful question. It's likely they face both benefits and expectations. Yes, it must be a balancing act to maintain their image while being authentic. Exactly. Do you think we would treat our VIP differently if we had the chance? I think it depends on the person. Some might just want to be treated like anyone else. Very true. Sometimes, being genuine can mean more than any special title or treatment. I agree. It's important to remember that everyone has their own story, VIP or not. Well said. Maybe we should focus on enjoying the event and learning from everyone there. Absolutely. It's a great opportunity to connect, regardless of status. Exactly. Who knows? 
we might meet someone inspiring without even realizing they're a VIP. That's the beauty of events like this everyone has something unique to offer. Lesson 5, Laughter is the Best Medicine Hey Anna, I just heard a joke that sounds hilarious. Oh really? I love a good laugh. What's the joke? Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. That's great. I love clever wordplay. Do you have any other suggestions? Sure. Here's another one. Why did the scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. That's a classic. I always appreciate puns. They're so delightful. Puns really add a fun twist to jokes. Have you heard any good ones lately? Yes. I recently heard, I told my computer I needed a break, and now it won't stop sending me KitKat ads. That's clever. It's funny how technology can sometimes have a sense of humor. Right? It's like our devices are trying to be relatable. Do you think humor helps us connect with others? Absolutely. Sharing laughs can break the ice and create bonds, making conversations more enjoyable. I agree. It's a universal language that can lighten the mood, no matter the situation. Exactly. I always try to incorporate a bit of humor in my conversations. It makes things more lively. That's a great approach. Even a little joke can turn a dull moment into something memorable. Yes. And it's a fantastic way to relieve stress. Laughter can be incredibly therapeutic. Definitely. It's amazing how a good laugh can change your perspective on a tough day. For sure. Have you ever tried using humor to ease tension in a serious situation? I have. One time, during a meeting, I made a light-hearted comment, and it instantly relaxed everyone. That's a brilliant strategy. It shows how humor can be a powerful tool in communication. Exactly. People often appreciate a moment of levity, especially in stressful environments. I think we should always keep a few jokes handy, just in case we need to lighten the mood. Absolutely. It's like having a secret weapon for happiness. Do you have a favorite joke you always share? Yes. I love telling, what did one wall say to the other wall? I'll meet you at the corner. That's a good one. Simple yet effective. It's fun to see people's reactions too. Definitely. Laughter can create a sense of camaraderie, making even strangers feel connected. Lesson 6, Shadows of History Hey Anna, I was reading about the history of labor and the harsh realities many faced. That sounds intriguing, but also quite somber. What did you find most striking? I learned that many workers in the past died from overwork, 
which is heartbreaking. It really is. The toll that labor took on individuals is often overlooked in history books. Yes. And then, to replace them, other workers were brought in, including many enslaved people from Africa. That's a significant part of history that shapes societies. It's important to acknowledge their struggles. Absolutely. While it's a dark chapter, many of these individuals displayed incredible resilience and strength. That's true. Despite the horrific conditions, many slaves found ways to survive and maintain their cultures. Yes, and their contributions laid the foundation for future generations. It's crucial to remember their stories. Indeed. Their legacy lives on in music, art, and traditions that enrich our culture today. I agree. There's so much we can learn from their experiences and the importance of perseverance. It's also a reminder of the need for social justice and equality in our current society. Well said. Understanding history helps us recognize the importance of fighting against oppression today. Yes. It encourages discussions about rights and freedoms that are still relevant in modern times. And it's vital for educating future generations about the past to prevent repeating mistakes. Absolutely. We need to promote empathy and understanding through education. Speaking of education, do you think storytelling can help convey these histories more effectively? Definitely. Stories have a way of connecting us emotionally, making historical events feel more personal. Yes. When we hear individual stories, it humanizes the statistics and facts we often see. Exactly. It brings history to life and helps us remember the individuals behind the events. I think it's essential to honor those who suffered and recognize their impact on our world today. That's a powerful perspective. Reflecting on the past can guide us toward a more just future. Absolutely. Keeping these conversations alive is crucial for fostering awareness and compassion. Lesson 7, Living in the Moment Hey Anna, I've been thinking about how important it is to capture memories. That's a wonderful thought. Keeping a journal or taking photos can really help preserve special moments. Exactly. I love looking back at my old journals, they remind me of experiences I might have forgotten. Journals are fantastic for reflection. It's like having a personal time capsule of your thoughts and feelings. Yes. Plus, writing helps clarify my thoughts and allows me to process my emotions. That's true. Sometimes, putting pen to paper can be quite therapeutic. Do you write every day? I try to, but I find it challenging to keep a consistent routine. How about you? I'm not as consistent, but whenever I feel inspired or have a significant event, I jot it down. That's a great approach. 
It's more about quality than quantity, after all. Exactly. And photos are another way to capture those fleeting moments. Do you take many pictures? I do. I love snapping photos during my travels. They make me reminisce about the adventures. Travel photos are the best. They tell stories that words sometimes can't express. True. But sometimes I worry that I focus too much on capturing the moment rather than living in it. That's a common concern. Striking a balance between documenting and experiencing is essential. Yes. I've started to remind myself to put my camera down and truly enjoy the scenery. That's a wise decision. Being present enhances the experience and creates deeper memories. Absolutely. It's all about finding that sweet spot between enjoying life and preserving it. And remember, sometimes the best memories are the ones we don't capture on camera. So true. Those spontaneous moments often turn out to be the most meaningful. Definitely. Do you have any tips for living in the moment while still capturing memories? One tip I use is to take a few photos and then put my camera away to soak in the experience. That's a great strategy. Also, setting aside time to reflect on those memories later can be rewarding. Yes. Looking back at my photos and journal entries lets me relive those moments with more clarity. Exactly. It's all about creating a balance that allows us to enjoy life fully while cherishing our memories. I completely agree. Here's to living in the moment and making beautiful memories along the way. Lesson 8, Wholesome Choices Hey Anna, I've been exploring some new recipes lately. That sounds exciting. What kind of recipes are you trying out? I've been focusing on healthy meals. I think those are great choices for maintaining a balanced diet. Absolutely. Eating healthy can significantly impact our energy levels and overall well-being. Do you also cook healthy meals at home? Yes, I do. I recently made a quinoa salad with lots of vegetables. It was delicious. That sounds refreshing. Quinoa is such a versatile ingredient. What vegetables did you include? I added cherry tomatoes, cucumbers, and bell peppers. A splash of lemon juice really tied it all together. Yum. I love how vibrant and colorful salads can be. They're like art on a plate. Exactly. And you can mix and match ingredients based on what you have at home. What's your favorite healthy dish? I enjoy making stir-fried vegetables with tofu. It's quick, easy, and packed with nutrients. That sounds great. I've never tried cooking with tofu. Is it hard to prepare? Not at all. Just make sure to press it to remove excess water, then you can saute it with your favorite seasonings. 
I'll have to give it a shot. Seasonings can really elevate a dish. What do you usually use? I love using garlic, ginger, and soy sauce. They add so much flavor. Those are fantastic choices. I also enjoy experimenting with herbs. Fresh basil or cilantro can make a huge difference. Absolutely. Fresh herbs can brighten up any meal. Do you have a favorite herb to cook with? I'm a big fan of rosemary. It adds a wonderful aroma to roasted dishes. Rosemary is lovely. It pairs well with potatoes and chicken. Have you tried any healthy desserts? Yes, I made a banana oat cookie recipe recently. They were surprisingly good and guilt-free. That sounds delightful. I love desserts that are both tasty and healthy. What's your secret ingredient? I used mashed bananas instead of sugar. It kept them sweet and moist. What a clever idea. I'm impressed by how you're getting creative in the kitchen. Thanks. Cooking healthy meals can be fun. It's all about experimenting and finding what you enjoy. I couldn't agree more. Plus, cooking at home helps us control what goes into our meals. Exactly. It's a great way to ensure we're eating nutritious foods while enjoying the process. And it's a wonderful opportunity to bond with family or friends while preparing meals together. Definitely. Cooking can be such a social activity, and it's even more rewarding when you share the results. Lesson 9, Reality Revealed Hey Anna, have you ever watched reality shows that focus on professions like doctors or policemen? Oh, definitely. I find them fascinating. They offer a glimpse into lives that are so different from our own. I agree. The pressure and quick decision-making in those fields are truly intense. Which shows do you like? I enjoy ER and COPS. They really bring the drama and reality of those professions to the forefront. Those are popular choices. I've seen clips from ER, and the medical emergencies seem so gripping. They are. It's incredible to see how doctors handle life and death situations in real time. And the way they work as a team is impressive. Communication is key in such high-stakes environments. Absolutely. It's a reminder of how crucial teamwork is, whether in medicine or law enforcement. Speaking of law enforcement, COPS offers an eye-opening look at police work. It's a mix of excitement and challenges. Yes. The unpredictability of each encounter keeps viewers on the edge of their seats. It also raises questions about ethics and community relations. Those discussions are important. Definitely. Shows like that can spark conversations about policing and public safety. I think they also help humanize officers by showing their everyday interactions with the community. 
Exactly. It's easy to forget that they're just people trying to do their jobs in tough situations. Do you think these shows accurately represent reality, though? Sometimes they dramatize things for entertainment, but they also shed light on real issues. That's true. Balancing entertainment with informative content can be tricky. It really can. But when done well, they can educate viewers while keeping them engaged. Do you ever feel inspired by what you see on these shows? Absolutely. They inspire me to appreciate the work that goes into these crucial professions. Same here. It's a reminder of the dedication and sacrifice many people make every day. And it makes me want to learn more about those fields. Have you ever considered a career in medicine or law enforcement? I've thought about it, but I'm more drawn to creative fields. Still, I admire those who choose those paths. That's a valid point. Every profession has its own value and impact on society. Yes. And shows like these can help people understand and respect the work that others do. Exactly. It's fascinating how television can influence our perceptions of various careers. It truly is. I think exploring different professions through reality shows can broaden our horizons. Lesson 10, Adventure Awaits. Hey Anna, I heard you went hiking recently. Yes. It was an amazing experience. I discovered some beautiful trails in the area. That sounds exciting. Were there options for different skill levels? Absolutely. There are beginner-friendly trails and experienced instructors to guide newcomers. That's great. It's important to have support when trying something new, especially in nature. I agree. The instructors helped us understand the basics of hiking safety and navigation. What were some of the tips they shared? They emphasized staying hydrated and wearing appropriate footwear. Those are crucial for comfort. Good advice. I've heard blisters can ruin a hiking trip. Did you have any issues? Thankfully, no. I made sure to break in my new hiking boots beforehand. Smart move. Preparation can make all the difference. How long was the hike? We hiked for about four hours, which included breaks to enjoy the scenery. Four hours sounds like a good workout. What did you see along the way? We saw stunning views of the mountains, a sparkling lake, and even some wildlife. Wow! I can only imagine how beautiful that must have been. Did you take any photos? Yes, I took plenty. Capturing those moments helps preserve the memories. That's true. It's nice to look back and relive those experiences. Any favorite moments? 
I loved reaching the summit and feeling that sense of accomplishment. It was exhilarating. I can relate. There's something so rewarding about conquering a challenging hike. Definitely. And sharing that moment with friends made it even more special. Speaking of friends, did you go with a group? Yes, a few friends joined me. We all encouraged each other along the way. That sounds like a great bonding experience. Hiking can really strengthen friendships. It truly does. We laughed, shared stories, and supported one another during tougher parts. It's wonderful how nature can bring people together. Are you planning to hike again soon? Yes, I'm hoping to explore more trails next weekend. There's so much beauty to discover. That's fantastic. I'd love to join you. Exploring new trails sounds like a lot of fun. You should definitely come. It's always more enjoyable with friends along for the adventure. Count me in. I'll make sure to prepare properly this time. Perfect. Just remember to bring plenty of water and snacks for energy. I will. Snacks are essential for keeping spirits high during a hike. Exactly. Plus, taking breaks to enjoy a snack adds to the overall experience. I can't wait. It sounds like an adventure we won't forget. Lesson 11, Closet Chronicles Hey Anna, I've been thinking about my closet lately. It's a bit chaotic. Oh no. A chaotic closet can be quite overwhelming. What do you plan to do about it? I think from now on I'll make it a habit to explore my closet regularly. That sounds like a fantastic idea. Regularly decluttering can help keep it organized. Exactly. I often forget what I have, which leads to wearing the same few outfits repeatedly. I can relate. Sometimes I find clothes I completely forgot about. It feels like a mini treasure hunt. It really does. I found a jacket the other day that I haven't worn in ages. It felt like new again. That's the best feeling. Rediscovering clothes can inspire fresh outfit combinations. Absolutely. Have you ever tried creating a capsule wardrobe? I have. It's amazing how versatile a small selection of well-chosen pieces can be. I'm intrigued. How did you decide which items to keep? I focused on what I actually wear and what makes me feel confident. That's a clever approach. I think I need to adopt a similar mindset. It's all about prioritizing quality over quantity. A few great pieces can go a long way. Do you have any tips for maintaining an organized closet? Definitely. I suggest organizing by category, like shirts, pants, and dresses. 
It makes finding things easier. That's a smart strategy. I might even color code my clothes for a more visually appealing look. I love that idea. It can add a sense of creativity to your space. Plus, it would make getting dressed in the morning more enjoyable. Exactly. And don't forget to donate or sell the items you no longer wear. That's a great way to make space and help others at the same time. Yes. It feels rewarding to know that someone else might enjoy what you no longer need. I should definitely set aside time this weekend to tackle my closet. That sounds like a productive plan. You might surprise yourself with what you find. I'm looking forward to the adventure. It's like giving my wardrobe a fresh start. And who knows? You might stumble upon some hidden gems. I'll keep my fingers crossed. I'll make sure to share my findings with you. I can't wait to hear all about it. It'll be fun to compare notes on our closet explorations. Definitely. We can inspire each other to keep our wardrobes exciting and fresh. Lesson 12, Games and Gains. Hey Anna, have you noticed the recent discussions about the Olympic Games? Yes. Some critics have claimed that major international events like the Olympics are being used less for sports and more for politics and marketing. That's an interesting perspective. It seems the focus has shifted over the years. It really has. Some argue that the spirit of competition is overshadowed by commercial interests. I can see how that would frustrate true sports enthusiasts. What do you think? I think there should be a balance. The Olympics are a celebration of athletic achievement, after all. Definitely. It's a chance for athletes from around the world to showcase their talents. Exactly. But when sponsorships and politics come into play, it can muddy the waters. Have you read about the influence of social media on these events? Yes. Social media can amplify both the excitement and the controversies surrounding the games. It's fascinating how athletes can now share their journeys directly with fans. Absolutely. It creates a more personal connection. But it also opens the door to criticism and scrutiny. True, and sometimes that can be overwhelming for the athletes. They have to navigate so much pressure. Indeed. Balancing performance with public expectations can be a challenge. Do you think the Olympic Committee should rethink their approach to these events? I believe they should focus on preserving the integrity of the Games while adapting to modern influences. That sounds like a solid plan. It's important to honor the tradition while embracing change. Yes. After all, the Olympics are rooted in the idea of unity and friendly competition among nations. 
What about the environmental concerns associated with hosting such large events? That's another critical issue. The ecological impact can be significant, and sustainability should be a priority. I agree. It would be great to see the Olympics set an example for eco-friendly practices. Definitely. Initiatives like using renewable energy and reducing waste could make a big difference. It would also resonate with younger audiences who are increasingly concerned about the environment. Exactly. Engaging the next generation is vital for the future of the Olympics. Do you have a favorite Olympic sport to watch? I love watching gymnastics. The athletes' grace and precision are mesmerizing. Gymnastics is amazing. I'm a fan of track and field events. The speed and competition are thrilling. Both sports showcase incredible talent. It's inspiring to see what athletes are capable of. It truly is. Regardless of the controversies, the Olympics can still unite people through the love of sports. That's the essence of it. No matter the challenges, the spirit of competition can shine through. Well said. Here's hoping the future of the Olympics embraces both tradition and progress. Lesson 13, The Fine Print Hey Anna, I think it's time we discuss the partnership details we talked about. Absolutely. I agree that we should go over the terms and conditions first. Great. What are your thoughts on the profit-sharing model? I believe a 60 to 40 split in favor of the primary investor would be fair. What do you think? That sounds reasonable especially since they'll be taking on more financial risk. Exactly. We should also outline the responsibilities and contributions of each party. Agreed. Clear expectations can help prevent misunderstandings later on. Speaking of responsibilities, how do you envision our roles in the partnership? I see myself focusing on the marketing and outreach aspects. You have such great insights into product development. I appreciate that. I'd love to take charge of product design and quality control. It's my passion. Perfect. It's essential to play to our strengths. What about the timeline for our project? I think we should aim for a six-month timeline for the initial launch. Does that seem achievable? Yes, with proper planning and commitment, we can definitely make that happen. Wonderful. We should also discuss how we'll handle potential disputes. Good point. Perhaps we can include a mediation clause to resolve conflicts amicably? I like that idea. It's always better to resolve issues without escalating them. Exactly. And what about exit strategies? It's wise to have a plan in place. I completely agree. We could outline terms for a buyout or dissolution if necessary. 
That's a smart approach. It keeps everything transparent and protects both parties. Transparency is crucial in any partnership. We need to build trust from the start. Definitely. How about communication? Regular updates can help keep us aligned. Yes. Weekly check-ins would ensure we're both on the same page and allow for adjustments as needed. That sounds like a solid plan. Should we document all these discussions? Absolutely. Having everything in writing will provide clarity and accountability. I'll draft a preliminary agreement based on our conversation. Perfect. Once we have that, we can review it together and make any necessary adjustments. Sounds good. I'm excited about this partnership and its potential.